Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is games leaving the collection for the month of July. July 2023, I almost said 2022, I'm still stuck in 2022, but we're going to have 15 games that we're getting rid of today, and as usual, multiple disclaimers or things to get out of the way before we start the video. Uh, first of all is I get a lot of games. I go through a lot of games. This is something that was always true of me personally, well before I became a content creator, and has become even more of a thing now that I get a lot of games to review and cover, and I'm always get, diving into the latest and greatest, and sometimes not so much the greatest, which is why these videos exist. Meaning at the end of the day I'm going to get rid of a bunch of games and many of these games weren't for me and many of these games are games I really enjoy and recommend. It's just the nature of having 350 new games a year come out that I'm diving into and playing and engaging in means I can only keep so many. I always give that disclaimer at the beginning of these videos because yes you may well see a game that I rated a 3.5, a 4, I enjoyed it, I liked it and all that and then sometimes they leave not because I didn't enjoy it but because I have to pick and choose where my limited game time goes in between covering the new stuff and covering old favorites that you'll regularly see me talking about in top 10 lists in my top 100 and all of that. A uh, second disclaimer is just not really a disclaimer. Second uh, thing to know is as usual, some of these games I give away over on Patreon. If you are a Patreon member, at higher tiers you're basically guaranteed a game, almost guaranteed a game, and at lower tiers is kind of a general chance that you'll get a game. I give away a few games a month over on Patreon. I, I usually batch them up, like I don't always ship them as fast as I'd like, but usually every other month or so I'll round things up, just send out a bunch of copies and get everything and every one taken care of over there. So if you want to become a Patreon. First of all, thank you. I appreciate your support. And also, sometimes, not always, there'll be free games along for the ride. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into this video. Let's talk about the games that we have on the table today. And to that end, let's start with the biggest one over here. And this is going to be Trials of Tempest. Trials of Tempest is one that I actually was fairly excited about. I was fairly excited about this game over here. Uh, if you watch my unboxing, you'll see that I, I dived into it. I went through the components. I really enjoyed, not enjoyed, I thought that it would be a game that was very much a fit for me. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, it sadly wasn't. It was okay. I, I liked the game. I liked Trials of Tempest, but I didn't love Trials of Tempest. It was merely a game that once I dove into it and played it, I enjoyed what it had to do, but I felt there were elements. And I have a review as well, by the way, last disclaimer. Some of these games like are games that I've reviewed, and just because of the nature of timelines, sometimes the reviews don't always go up. I film a lot of videos, and sometimes you have, I'll have videos that are sitting in the queue for like three months before they actually go up, which means sometimes you are getting spoilers to videos I may have filmed two months ago, and you're only just seeing me get rid of a game now. That does happen. In the case of Trials of Tempest, whether or not you saw the review, I don't know if it went up yet, but uh, this is one where I, I dove into it and I played it, and I felt there was too much, too little focus on combat, which, weirdly enough for me in skirmish games, usually I feel that there's too much of a focus on combat, and I like it when a skirmish game gives me something else to focus on. In the case of games like Super Fantasy Brawl, like, uh, um, not Sky Tier, no, not Sky Tier, um, uh, God tier, God tier, uh, those are games that I like the degree of objectives you have that kind of give you a focus point other than just kill all the bad guys. In the case of Trials of Tempest, I kind of felt that there was less less of a reason to engage in combat than I would have ideally liked, despite that a lot of the mechanics and, and card play and action seem driven around the combat, but the less reward for combat, that kind of threw me off a bit as far as the actual gameplay experience. Past that, I enjoyed it, just ultimately not enough to be a game that replaces some of my go-to skirmish games. That's Trials of Tempest, d d over there. From there, we'll go to the smallest box on the table. We'll have a bit of a, a, a divergent little aspect there. We have Fishing Lessons from Button Shy Games. Fishing Lessons is part of the Simply Solo lines from Button Shy from Scott Arms, and I enjoy this little puzzle of a game. Uh, this is part of a series of like five small box game reviews I did, and Fishing Lessons is one that I definitely enjoy, definitely recommend, but I recommend with the caveat that I recommend other Button Shy games over this. I like Fishing Lessons. It's possible Possibly my second favorite in the Simply Solo line. I'd have to go over what's in the Simply Solo line, but in terms of button shy games that I do recommend as far as a solid, solid solo games you can dive into, the entire Spallopolis line I really enjoy. I still think that Food Chain Island is one of the best games in that series. I love Numpsters. I'm a huge fan of that one. Fishing Lessons kind of felt like it had elements of some of those games, a little bit of elements of um, of, of, of Food Chain Island, but very different at the same time. Uh, ultimately, for me, this is not a bad game at all. Definitely enjoyed this, definitely recommend it, but I already have uh, several small box games, and this is just a drop lower in terms of my personal preference. From there, we'll have two over here, and this is part of a dual video I did, uh, Soul Forge Fusion and Key Forge Worlds Collide. I'm getting rid of both these games over here, despite the fact that I may actually still have Keyforge in my collection. I'm still uncertain in terms of Keyforge Winds of Exchange. I backed that one, and I just got that stuff, and I haven't really dove into it yet. I plan on diving into it, and I've heard good things about how it takes the Keyforge system and makes it slightly better, which might be all that I need. See, the problem with these two games is I really like the gameplay of Soulforge Fusion, but the table presence 
and card art and graphic design really have me rarely driving to pull this one out. I enjoy it. I am always down for a game. If you have a game, of, if you have Soulful Fusion, I genuinely like this game and I genuinely enjoy playing it. I just never find myself pulling it off the shelf because the overall aesthetic and graphic design and box, all those things, they are factors, and especially when you're fighting with so many games to dive into. And those factors have held me back from really usually recommending, not recommending, from pulling it off the shelf in terms of playing it. And then Keyforge is almost the reverse. Keyforge has stellar graphic design, really pulls you in. The art, I love the overall art and presentation of this game, but ultimately the gameplay I found was a drop lacking. I found that I have played games of Keyforge where I really enjoyed it, and I've played games of Keyforge where I thought it was okay, and a lot of that comes into the deck combinations. And inconsistent play is one of my pet peeves in game design, not really game design and game experience. When a game gives me inconsistently good experiences, I find very quickly I stop pulling it off the shelf because I'd rather pull off the game that is either the promise of something new or alternatively a game that I know I enjoy as opposed to pulling out a game that I'm like, hey, this is this is good, possibly today, possibly not. It depends on the decks I pull out. So ultimately, Keyforge Worlds Collide does leave. I still have Winds of Exchange in my collection for now. We'll see what happens with that one. But both of these leave. This is part of a Play This, Not That series of videos I did. Uh, and as I think I think it's the first Play This, Not That where ultimately I, ca I went with neither as opposed to like, they're both good games, but for me personally, I went with neither. Usually Play This, Not That is a series where I am often comparing things that either are two things I really like or sometimes something I really like with something that is similar but not quite as much for me. This is the first time that both of them are leaving, again, caveat around Winds of Exchange. From there we have Resist, which is a small solo game over here. This is coming to you from uh, 25th Century Games and from Salt and Pepper Games. Uh, Salt and Pepper and then distributed by 25th Century. Uh, but Resist over here is a strong solo puzzle that I enjoyed uh, with a caveat. I, I really enjoyed this one. I think it's really well done. This is one of those games. Like Sometimes I play a game and it's fascinating being in, in, in the review space kind of uh, or just covering or giving opinions of things. It's fascinating because sometimes I'll play a game. It's not for me. I hated it. And then people will love it and I'll be like, wow, I'm shocked. Like I'm shocked that people enjoy it so much it, it happens it happens a lot there are times when my opinion on this is so divergent from what the other uh, other opinions are that i'm just surprised i'm like okay i missed the boat i don't get it and sometimes it's just that i liked it but other people love it you have those experiences and in the case of resist that's not what's going on here Resist is a game that i really enjoy and am not keeping but i totally understand anyone who loves this game the game design is very clean very very well done it's an excellent solo puzzle as far as uh, giving you reasons to to try to figure out how to manage your cards, to have to manage your McKee as you use them for their weaker effects or their stronger effects to then purging them from your deck and their limited resource. You have to be mindful as you try to tackle and, ac and accomplish all these missions. Uh, to me, there was one main critique that took resist away from being a game that I feel the need to own and then one compensating factor which really added to it. And the main critique is the fact that ultimately the scoring system in resist is do as good as you possibly can. That's the scoring system, which I hate in games. The rest of the game, very clean, very well done. I hate the scoring system and was like, hey, aim for 20 points, but like if you get 16, it's a really good victory, and if you get 14, it's like a, a good victory. Uh, to me, I feel like, okay, well, then the goal is to get all 20 points and not anything else. Anything else is not really winning, and I kind of got that sense from Resist. It's like, okay, great, at any point I can stop and just say that's my score for the game. It really took the wind out of my sails of an incredibly well-done game design outside of that. So I really think the game design is very clean. That win condition kind of just kind of took it out of me, which is also interesting because recently I covered Four Northward, a solo trick-taking experience that kind of has that same puzzle and complaint. I don't know what it is, but Four Northward, I partially know what it is. Four Northward, I would say that I like Four Northwood so much that I'm kind of willing to forgive it that much. Whereas Resist, I like it, and I debated holding on to this, so I debated keeping it, I went back and forth on this one, but ultimately I decided that I don't feel the need to own this one as much. But again, both of them are really strong games with the same complaint, but ultimately I... Ch that chose to keep 4 Northwood and not chose to keep Resist. Now, I will say Resist does have a scenario book, as does 4 Northwood. Lots of comparisons there, and both of them are on GameFound as well, I believe, but uh, both small box games, all that stuff. But either way, Resist and 4 Northwood, I think both of them have scenario books. I think that I enjoy the scenario book in 4 Northwood more. I feel it gives more variability. Resist, is, some of the scenarios were more variable, some less variable, but overall, I definitely like it more with the scenarios and give me more of a sense of actually accomplishing a goal as opposed to face, fa facing off against, uh, trying to face... I'm trying, trying to say face and fight at the same time. Trying to uh, overcome a specific scoring metric. Which brings us to the next one over here, another small box game, which is going to be Compromot. Compromot from um, Helvetic Games. This is basically Blackjack in a small box with a series of, of powers and abilities around it. But the basic idea is two players going head to head, trying to like beat each other but not break 21, while you use various powers and abilities and try to win various lanes. So it's a lane battling system, similar to Lost City, similar to Battle Line, similar to uh, Airline and Sea, but with a Blackjack aspect to it. I enjoy this 
one, don't feel the need to keep it. Ultimately, it still feels a lot more like Blackjack. And for lame battling games, I just think there are others that kind of do the same thing, but feeling less like Blackjack. So I liked it, had fun with it, ready to move on from it. Then we have Expedition to Newdale over here. Expedition to Newdale, which I was definitely looking forward to this one. This is based on the uh, Oh My Goods line of games. This is coming to you from, oh my gosh, blanking on his name. I know it's on the box, but I'm trying to remember. He did a Great Western Trail. He did Mombasa. Alexander Pfister. I know it's on the box. I, just, I like remembering things. You know that moment when you're like kind of watching a movie, TV, whatever it is, and you see that actor, and you know, you know you can pull out your phone, you know you can IMDB it, but it's just not the same. It's not satisfying unless you can pin down where. Where did I see her before? Where did I hear that voice if you're watching something animated? You really want to lock it in yourself. There's that moment of satisfaction, and I, I got that moment of satisfaction. Either that or I saw the uh, designer's name on the camera screen ahead of me. I, I didn't. I, I remembered it. Either way, Accession to New Zealand here is based on the Oh My Good system, and they took it and made it into a larger board game space. A larger board game, not space. Uh, and to that end, I thought it really captured what Oh My Goods did fairly well, but did so in a larger box and didn't really improve upon the experience for me. I was hoping for an Oh My Goods but improved, because I liked Oh My Goods, but I didn't like Oh My Goods enough to keep it. I thought it was a good system, but there are other uh, currency conversion systems, not really currency, goods conversion systems out there that I enjoy more. Uh, uh, offhand, Glass Roads and, and La Havre are going to be two, Glass Road and La Havre are going to be two systems in, in goods conversion that I really enjoy a whole lot more, and I was wondering if Expedition to News would make it better and it didn't it was more oh my goods and maybe if you like oh my goods maybe it's better to me it just felt like more of the same but in a bigger box still enjoyable still a good game but not one i need to keep when i have Lahav and glass road in my collection then we have another small box game from 20th century games again we have oh my oh my brain over here oh my brain this is a game of trying to uh, get rid of all your cards so you can score as few points as possible and mostly it comes down to just laying cards down on top of a pile it felt incredibly luck driven it just wasn't for me is there luck management and mitigation and all those things yes of course there is but it felt like most of the game came down to the luck of what you have and what you roll sometimes overall i found it to be a fun experience for kids but not a particularly satisfying experience as someone playing the game outside of, you know, playing it with kids. Then we have Goryo. Goryo is going to be from, well, it's from G G Getion Games, but distributed by Gigamech Games. And this is a hidden movement game. Again, I covered this in a small box. I think, actually, I think Compromot and Oh My Brain were all in that. In fact, Fishing Lessons made a bunch of these small box games may have been in this video. But Goryo over here is going to be a hidden movement game where you're trying to face off against these spirits who are trying to break all the things in the temple as you manage your samurai guards. I thought that... I enjoyed the gameplay of Goryo. I thought it was fun and enjoyable to go through, but it's enjoyable in a vacuum, meaning this is a game where I both had fun and can recommend it, with the caveat that I would never recommend this over other games within the same genre. I think there are other games within the hidden movement genre that are less complicated and more rewarding than Goryo was. I found Goryo to be a drop less intuitive than other games I've played in the genre, in the hidden movement genre, so I found it a bit less intuitive and not as rewarding to play. So it's not that I didn't enjoy myself, I definitely enjoy myself, and I definitely recommend Goryo. Uh, not recommend it. That's not true. I don't recommend it. It's a weird thing. It's a weird uh, nuance to take. It's I had fun with Goryo, and if you have Goryo, I think you'll have fun with it too. But I don't recommend it, not because of any fault on its own, but because other games in the genre are better, in my opinion. Less complicated, more rewarding. And if you're like, what other games? Honestly, if you're looking for like a gateway game to the genre, Scotland Yard, I think, still holds up as being a good gateway into the hidden movement genre, if you're looking for something not too overwhelming. And if you're ready to take on something a little bit more intricate and interesting, I think mind management is one of the best in the genre, giving you an accelerated pace of how you can jump into it, but also being a game that that's just so ridiculously rewarding and so, so good. I think mind management is, is amazing and very, very different and very nuanced. And you might be like, well, it's a little too complicated and fiddly. Honestly, Goryeo, I think, is a little too complicated and fiddly. I think mind management has uh, less complicatedness and just more rewarding for what it does. But again, Goryeo, still enjoyed it. Just don't recommend it because of that aspect over there. Then we have Nightfall. Nightfall from Red Raven Games. This is one that is... um. A solo, cooperative, and competitive experience, and campaign experience, that is all fit into this box. And I kind of I, I compare this in my review to kind of a bit of a jack-of-all-trades and master of none. I think Nightfall is a good gaming experience. I had fun with Nightfall. I also recommend other games in their line over Nightfall. I think Nightfall tries to do a little too much, and as a result, no single mode felt like a standout system. The main idea of the game is a skirmish game. You're going to have these demons, you're going to have these knights that are facing off against another. And you either have teams of players playing against each other, controlling demons or knights, or you're playing it solo and or cooperative against the demons playing as the knights or you also have a campaign mode if you're playing it solo or cooperative you can dive into that as well i like the aspects of the campaign mode i felt there's a good choose your own adventure kind of sets the system of progression not overly long i like the overall skirmish system i like the powers and abilities a lot of everything about the game i liked but 
it felt like every mode I had small critiques about aspects of each mode, and ultimately I felt like had they given you a singular experience that was just strong in one thing, I think it could have been a drop better. As it stands, still a good game. I think for the variety of play modes you'll get out of the box, there's a lot of game for a decent price point over here, and I do recommend it, but there are other things that I think are better. If I'm looking for a campaign game, if I'm looking for a solo game, if I'm looking for a skirmish game, I have better things in each of those genres. So a drop of, of Jack of All Trades, Master of None, but still very much enjoyed this one. Amazing art, amazing world building, and overall a good game. Then we have Koali over here. Koali from uh, Gigamic Games. Gigamic Games, uh, I think it's, I always say, I never remember if it's Gigamic or Gigamic. I never remember. It's one of those two. It's actually probably neither of those two, honestly, if I'm thinking about it critically now. But either way, Koali over here. This is a two-player abstract game that is fun-ish. It's fun-ish because I have two complaints about it. One is about the game itself, and the other is about the fact that I I think this game gives me strong vibes of TAC, and I just think TAC is so, so, so much better. I'm noticing a trend here where there's a bunch of games today that I don't dislike, I just like other games better. That happens. That's the nature of this whole conversation. It's the nature of why I both like a game and then get rid of it. In the case of Koali, my review is a little bit more mixed on it, because I like what the game is trying to do as you try to manage these tiles, and you're trying to effectively create a connect four, so to speak. It could be four diagonally, four vertically, four whatever. It could be four, you know, stacked on top of one another. As long as you get a row of four, as you stack and move pieces around the table, and that's the key, because you're not placing a tile at a time like connect four, you're moving towers of pieces and dropping off pieces along the way. And if you're like, oh, that's why it sounds like tack, that's why it sounds like tack. I have two problems with quality. Number one is that a surprising amount of my games ended in a tie. I double checked the rules, I looked online, I couldn't find anyone else having this problem, so I don't know if this is me doing something wrong and just not understanding, I don't know, but ultimately too many of my games ended in a tie. There were very infrequent wins when I played through this game. It was like, okay, tie, stalemate, okay, reset, tie, stalemate, reset, tie, oh, we get, now you won. It, and I, again, I looked online this experience seems to be unique to myself, so take it with a grain of salt as I go through it. This is one of those times that actually reminds me of uh, Dinosaur Island Roar and Right, where my personal experience of the game seems so drastically different than others that I'm like, hey, call it a me problem. I still have to give you my opinion because it is my opinion, but let's just, just understand that even I'm worried that it's a unique problem to me. That's my first problem with Quali. My second problem with Quali is even if you remove that, even if you do win, then it just becomes a very good game that is not TAC. That, that's what it is to me. I cannot see a world which I recommend Quali over TAC. I think TAC to me is just, and again, I still enjoyed Quali. I still think it's a good game. I think it's visually beautiful. I guess that is something to say. This is game is visually beautiful, although it's a little bit deceptive in marketing because this board in the game is not white. And if you you bought this game thinking the board is white i mean yes you could look in the back and see the color of the board but it's a little bit it's a little bit deceptive like giving you not the best marketing in that sense but past that the game still looks beautiful but i still prefer the gameplay of tack with that let's go ahead and go to the next one which is going to be explorers from ravensburger this is a roll and write game that is enjoyable it also doesn't necessarily stick with me quite as much uh, the core gameplay of explorers is going to be you're going to have these various maps you're going to be putting into here so you have different combinations and all players will have their their same map so you set up your map one way and then we all mirror it to match to give us that map setup or whatever it is but then past that as far as the actual gameplay you're marking things off you're gathering gems you're doing all this fun stuff over here but ultimately in explorers the the gameplay is a little too samey game to game now i do say in my review i talked about this the goals you have the various extra goals there's a ton of those and those drastically uh, change up the way you approach the game so they did a great job with the goals such that i do recommend explorers i do think it's a good game i just have a lot of role in my collection and so it's two things it's the gameplay itself is a little bit repetitive the goals do change that up and there's also various things you can flip in terms of abilities or the way the map setup is or the goal tiles that will change up the way you approach the game so they definitely have that but it's still at the end of the day it's competing with a lot of great games in the genre rolling rates are always hard to hard to just justify keeping because there's so many of them that come out and it's so hard for new ones to stick uh, in fact the, the truth is new ones do stick but they're often they're often reapers like i keep keep i keep getting in and keeping the the various ganshan clever lines that's so clever clever cube uh, twice as clever uh, what's the last one what's the fourth one i can't remember what it's called four clover i don't know what it is either one i also keep all the games in the um the line of games from Three Sisters and, and Fleet and Motor City. So I do find I am pulled to a certain genre of that game, mostly cascading bonuses. That's the thing that tends to hook me in the role of my genre. Explorers is fun, and I'm ready to move on from it. Then we have one that I feel really badly about, because it's also a review copy I haven't really covered. And this is Glenmore Highland Games. This is the expansion, and we specifically have the big box, Glenmore Chronicles. And I haven't figured out exactly what to do about this one right now. I really try not to get rid of uh, review copies that I don't cover. I try, like whenever I get sent a review copy, 
I really try to cover it. If I didn't ask for it, it gets deprioritized and it gets low on my list, but I really, really try to cover review copies that I get because it was sent to me to review, so like, I'll try as much as possible, not always. In the case of Glenmore, Glenmore is a game that I've struggled with for a long time. It's actually one of the first reviews I did on the channel. If you go back far enough and you look for reviews on the Board Game Co. channel, check out a review for Glenmore, you'll see me standing in front of a self of games, talking about the game, and just, you know, talking about the fact that I'm not totally sold in it, but the fact that I do like it, and it's still here, like three years later. It's stuck around because my feelings on Glenmore actually haven't changed much over the past three years. It's always a game that I enjoy, and it's always a game that I have a hard time getting tabled. I find that people in my game group enjoy it, but rarely ever ask for it. And it's a game that's both brilliant and amazingly well done, and I understand why so many people love it. I played the original Glenmore, like, way back in the day. I mean, this is a game, I hunted down a copy of it. I, I drove down to a mall to do a local trade because it was out of print at the time. Glenmore 2 didn't exist yet. I hunted it down, I played it, I thought it was brilliant, and then I got the new version, and I continued to play it. I never really dove into the modules, which is part of the problem, or, I, that's not true, I dove into, like, one or two of the modules, but I haven't heavily dove into the modules. But then we also have Highland Games with the expansion, and I keep hoping that I'll dive into Glenmore enough to really play it. And I still kind of want to. Like, I don't know what will happen. This is one of those games where I'm probably going to uh, bring this to Level Up Retreat. The Level Up Retreat is a convention we're doing July 14th to 16th, which means by the time you watch this video, you might have, like, I don't know, four days left to buy a badge before ticket sales close or something like that. I don't know. But either way, uh, Glenmore, Glenmore Chronicles is one that I might bring to the retreat and see if someone there wants to play it with the expansion and the, you know, some of the modules or something. I don't know. Ultimately, I like the game, and I kind of want to play with the modules, but I never get to table with the same people again and again. Whenever I pull out the game to play it, uh, they, they're always okay with it, and they don't ask for it again. That means that each new group of people, I start from the beginning and don't add in the modules. Really, I should just... I don't know. I, I kind of, the last time I played it was kind of the last draw for me. I was like another person who was into it, but also not super into it. And I just, I'm just not interested in fighting for it anymore. I like the game. I enjoy the game. For me, I want to try the modules and the expansion to see if those make it a game that goes from, I like it to a game that I love it and I want to keep it, but I haven't had that opportunity or chance to do so. So ultimately it's a game that know that I like it enough that I, I want to explore it more. And I just haven't found people willing to explore it with me enough. And so and kind of, kind of goes away, sadly. The next two over here, we're going to have one that's a little bit easier, one that's a little harder. The slightly easier one is going to be, oops, oops, we got Castles by the Sea over here. Castles by the Sea, which for me was one that I, didn't work for me as well. I, I reviewed this one, and to me this is one that I was very excited about from Brotherwise Games, and it has that scoring mechanism that I really tend to enjoy in games where you have like this, um, nuanced scoring aspect to it as far as not nuanced scoring variable scoring aspect to how you're trying to build blocks build these sand castles score as many points as possible and ultimately for me i just didn't i didn't feel the magic i had a few complaints about it as far as how things work the hazards i thought were a little too random and the gameplay i felt the the core gameplay loop i thought was a little too procedural and it didn't have as many nuanced interesting decisions i felt that the having three sand blocks around and having to place them touching each other didn't give me enough creative freedom to really feel like i was making interesting choices and so ultimately, Castle by the Sea, I gave it a few goes, and it ultimately was one that was not quite as much for me. I really wanted to like it, and I do understand if others like it. This is one of those games, similar to, um, not as similar to Resist, like, interesting. Resist, I kind of expect that people will like, because I really think the gameplay is really clever. Uh, for me, Castle by the Sea is kind of in the middle ground. If you said you loved it, I'd be like, that makes sense. And if you said, hey, I really didn't like it at all, I'd be like, that makes sense. I think there's a lot going on here. It's beautiful, it's charming, all good things. Ultimately, the gameplay did not deliver on the experience I wanted from it, which is why, ultimately, it is sadly, but reluctantly, going away. And then lastly, we have over here Witchstone, and this, like Resist, was another one that I kind of wrestled with a lot as far as keeping it or not keeping it. Uh, Witchstone is a fun game from Reiner Knizia, an incredible designer, and this one kind of feeds into Ingenious, his, his original game, one of one of his many original games, Ingenious, uh, kind of feeding into that loop, but then having an entire Euro game system built around it. It kind of feels like if Stefan Feld had built a game using Ingenious as the main system, that that's what this game feels like over here, and it is really good except for one small problem. I like it. I like Witchstone. I think there's lots of interesting things to do. There's lots of cascading aspects to it. I really enjoy it, and I do recommend it. I think it's a charming game that is well done, gives you variable gameplay. If you like midweight Euros, if you like Stefan Feld in general, like this is very much fitting into that category. The main aspect for me as to why it's a game that goes instead of stays is, at the end of the day, again, first of all, lots of games trying to choose the ones that work for me and this did go on my keeping shelf uh, both this and resist let's see what games that's actually an interesting question glenmore is coming from my collection um meaning in terms of this there's a few kinds of you know what, let's finish this review and we'll talk about it to talk about this game so the main thing that kind of held back for me is the fact that witchstone is a game that the main mechanism that's interesting and charming is the same mechanism from ingenious and i think i'd almost rather just play ingenious 
and then play a Stefan Feld game, as opposed to playing it mixed together. I felt that Ingenious is very much a one-trick pony, and taking that into a complex inter interweaving Euro game, I felt a little bit too much like the focus was on the one-trick pony. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Again, I really like this. This one came from my, my shelf, which means this is going to... I'm going to end off the video by talking about where these games came from. Probably should do this in every game that's leaving the collection. It's a good, uh, useful aspect to go go through. But there's always different kinds of games. There's games I play and then get rid of. There's games that have been in my collection for a long time. And then there's games I play, I try to hold on to, and then move on from. And there's always different range there. But to that end, you know, Explorers is a game. Explorers, Kuali, Nightfall, Goryo, Expedition to New Zale, Trials of Tempest, Cast by the Sea, uh, and then Oh My Brain, Fishing Lessons, and Compromot are all games that I kind of just played, gave them the shot, gave them the, going through the whole review process, all that, and then moved on from them. In the case of Glenn Moore, this is coming from my collection shelf. This has been here for a long, long time, and I'm finally ready to move on from it. And in the case of Witchstone, Keyforge, Soulforge, and resist. In the case of these four games, these are all games that I played, put them on my shelf to own, and then, you know, months later eventually decided that it's not going to stick around. That's the uh, nuanced breakdown of these games. And with that, that is the Games Leaving the Collection video for the month of July. As I said earlier, if you over, if you are over on Patreon, this video will be up over there, and you can go ahead and try to select certain games. Not all of these are available. I think Glenmore I might specifically reserve for Level Up Retreat, and I know Castles by the Sea is taken, so not all of these are available, but most of them should be. And with that, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I appreciate you being here, and as always, I hope you have a good one.